Okay, I'm gonna start talking about freehand. Uh, you can see this is obviously a Riva Titan head. Um, I've done the initial, blocked in the initial colors. I'm now gonna add the freehand. So where to start? This is the tough, the, the hardest part with freehands is this first bit. Big thing that helps me is to print out the image that you're gonna use, and I'm using just some images that I've found in a uh, anatomical textbook that my wife has. Um, she's a physiotherapist, so she's got, I've had loads of these things kicking around for ever, 20 years or something. Um, so I love all of this anatomical stuff. If you wanna do, if you wanna copy, you can do anything you want. It could be anything, but this is what I'm doing. Um, it's usually gonna be a skull though, isn't it really, if we're honest with ourselves? Be honest with yourselves. Um, so you get your skull, print it out just off your printer at home and keep printing it until you can lay it over the thing that you wanna, where you wanna do it, lay it over and it's gonna fit and have that in front of you. Have it at the scale that you want it. I find it's easier for your eye, especially if it's sitting so close. You want to be working from something that's the same. If you're already working from something that's the same size, it's half the battle. It's, it's really half the battle. Print it out, sit it in front of you. Put a white sheet of paper down. Don't have your... Don't have distractions. This is a clean thing. You need to be precise with this. Um, be in the right mindset. Um, use your favorite brush. It needs to have a good tip on it and the paint needs to be thin. So you can see this is actually, this is quite thick. Um, I've painted so many freehand skulls in my time that I can just paint these in my sleep. Um, but the other side, which is the anatomical drawing side is going to be harder. So let's get started there. What I've done is initially uh, I have gone through with my mechanical pencil and I have yeah, I'm not sure how clearly you can see you can just see there's some little lines there so before I've even put the paint down I've gone through and I've just dot 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 and all you're doing is making little dots and you'll be joining the dots and it's it's easier if you want to rub it out you can still rub it out at this stage just just with a standard rubber just be careful um yeah so let's get started we're just gonna i'm just gonna work start with the outline for now and i'll just show you how i do it so this is my um artist opus size one i'm gonna use that over here just because um i haven't tried it for freehand yet and i want to try it so i normally just use my um windsor newton series seven um but i haven't done uh, freehand for a little while for a uh, probably a few months actually. This will be the first I've done for a few months. So I'm gonna try this thing out because I haven't used it for freehand. We'll see how we go. Um, so I'm gonna go, this will be red, but I'm gonna go with a nice light color, which is the same as the other side, which is Ushabdi bone. Um, I'm gonna do it, like I said, very thin. Um, and we're just gonna mark out where this needs to go. So you can see at this stage, even if I cook it, we can still go back and get rid of it quite easily. Um, because I've got the stripes here, um, <laughs> it's not as easy, but it's nothing's impossible. Nothing's impossible. It is only paint. Um, you can get rid of it. You can just go back in with a brush and, um, and yeah get rid of what you've put down as long and this is this is the absolutely crucial thing very thin paint do it very thin paint uh, so I'm just going to add these teeth here hopefully you can see that all right um, yeah very very thin paint so that if you do fuck it up you can just paint over it that's the ideal situation if you use too much and if you keep working and pushing and trying to get it uh, to get something right past a certain point, you won't you will have to strip it and start again. 
So let's get this section under here. Now it doesn't matter that this is light where it actually needs to be dark because it's always easier to make it darker than it is to make it lighter. So just do it like that. I probably, this is a shabdi bone, I probably could have used Zandri dust here, which might've been more effective on the, on the white sections. Um, but I can, I can definitely see it, um, whether or not you can, sorry, apologize, but, um, yeah. So we go like that. I don't really, I'm not super happy with the angle of the jaw there. I don't see so there's like a bulge there. Um, so I will need to fix that, but that's fine. It's at the bottom here. Um, so you can see it doesn't really line up with where just it just looks wrong uh, so let's get some, a little bit of uh, a bit of Abaddon black on there and I'm gonna switch to get rid of that I'm gonna use this I'm just gonna show you how I do it I wouldn't normally do this until the end but this is you know I'll just show you what I do so a little bit of thinned Abaddon, Abaddon black on my normal um, my, my old uh, Windsor and Newton and we can go like that. And just clean him up a little bit there. Blend it in. Bit of a lick. Ooh, tasty. Not so important there because that's all going to be um, coloured in anyway. It's going to be red. Yeah, there you go. So. That's the beauty of having it so thin. Really, really, I can't stress that enough. If you're doing freehand, it needs to be so thin and just gradually build it up. Um, yeah, so here we go. A little bit more. Let's get the rest of this, um, I think it's called musculature, around the eye here. We'll just go like that. We're just blocking in the major shapes. So you can see... I've got this, um, I don't know, there's probably doctors watching this thinking, oh my God, this idiot doesn't even know what any of this stuff's called. And I don't. But can you jibe in a storm? Well, if you're a doctor, you probably can actually. Um, here we go. So that bit there, I just want to copy that. So let's see what we've got. It's going to run about here. See how thin that is? And I'm doing it on the edge. It's that edge there that's gonna connect to the the red. That's cool. <laughs> Let's just go with what color it is instead of naming it. Um, yeah. And the next big thing that we wanna have is these ones here. So, Basic outline there. What we can now do, let's go with a more professional YouTuber would have had all of his paints ready. But that's not, uh, that's not, that's not me. Hmm. Hmm. I'm gonna go for a bit of Mephiston red. Here we go. Give him a shake. I'm using, this is an air paint. So Mephiston red air. I really, for freehand, I always just use air paints. So that my Yushabdi bone that I've, I've put on here is air paint and it's thinned. So we just go like that. And let's just, uh, let's get started. Now this is where um, I'm gonna start here at this darkest section. So see where it's, this bit here where it's dark, it's going to translate to here. Uh, I'm not sure if, you know, if you watch the Richard Grays of the world, I'm not sure if that's how he does it. I haven't got his Patreon or anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just what I'm going to do. Like that so that's I'm just working the main shapes first of all so that I know that I like it 
Uh, and then this guy is going to go around here. I don't, um, I haven't printed this one out in color um, because it's, I have done this a lot before. So I sort of know the colors that I want to use. It's really the shapes that are important at this stage. Um, if I get to a point, um, you know, further into the paint job where I think, oh God, I don't really know where I'm going. That's when I'll have it um, sitting out in front of me in color, usually just on my phone. I won't, I won't. Uh, it's only really this st this initial stage where you're getting the the structure down that I, I find it's really helpful to have the actual um, the actual uh, physical picture in front of me. Otherwise, I'll just use a phone. Um, or if I've got the freehand that I've already done on um, something else in the army, then I'll use that, which is better. Um, but if you know if you don't have it in front of you, you don't have it in front of you. Whatever. So it's all about holding this steady, thin paint as well, obviously. As I've said so many times already, you're probably sick of that. Um, yeah. This is... Um, this brush is actually really nice for freehand. I find I'd, I'd, it's, it's got too much give in it for... Um, for my everyday painting, I find. Well, not too much. It's just not as nice. It's still, a, they're still beautiful brushes, but it's just not, I find it's not as, um, doesn't suit my style for as much for painting the actual miniatures or, um, you know, details. But for this, for freehand, I've got to say, it's pretty impressive. It's actually, um, this is, it really does shine doing this, this, um, this brush, I, <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Nice to, nice to use it. Okay, where are we here? So we're just gonna go with a couple of little, I'm just using like, just a bee's dick is the amount there. Look at that, look how tiny that is, poor bees, eh? Tiny little dicks, bees. And then there's like a connection there. And then we're gonna do, a, this one here, we can still have it all quite, it's quite rough at this stage. So this is sort of our mid, This I, I'm doing this because this is our middle tone, this Mephiston red. It'll get darker and it'll get lighter and there'll be, you know, more bone colour in it. If you want to see what it will look like, Go onto my Instagram and have a look at the war hand, the freehand on the warhound that I did um, that I did last year. Uh, there'll be lots of photos of it from around September, October last year. Um, if you want to go and see what this freehand is going to look like, yeah. Again, I won't be putting a link for it. It's just not what I not what I do. Um, but yeah, you can see that that is the blocking in stage. So. I guess uh, I'll I'll come back uh, when I am working on it and I find something else that I think people could use. So I hope that's been helpful somewhat. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for watching. All right, the uh, Reaver Titan freehand. So you see I've gotten quite a lot of the Mephiston red in there. This is, the like I said, the middle, middle ground tone. So what I'll do now is I will add a little bit of... Um, Abaddon Black, uh, I've actually got the wrong one there, that's a base paint, not an air paint, so I'll switch that out. Abaddon Black uh, to the Mephiston Air, and a little bit of um, Pink Horror. Uh, this isn't an air paint, um, I don't have this in air paint, because I, I really only use it for this, so I'll just mix this with a bit of water. Um, yeah, mix that with the next tone lighter will be, the next tone lighter will be these two, and the next tone darker is these two. Um, so I'm going to start with the with a little bit of black in it, uh, and you can see I've still got my um, I still got this guy up there for uh, you know just to make sure that I, I stay on track with it and that everything looks right as I'm adding these little lines. But you can see that's where we're at. It's not super neat, 
uh, and the lines are quite rough, I think. Um, but it's uh, it's blocking it in. Um, if you're out there and you're a physiotherapist like my wife and you, you feel compelled to send me a little message that says, oh, that little connection there is not, it actually, they actually go the other way, which is what my wife does, um, please don't. Just don't. Thanks. Okay, so this is uh, quite thin, you can see. Uh, yeah, let's, should we zoom in a little bit? Can we zoom in? We can, look at that. The future is now, people. Uh, so, where's my darkest bit? I'm gonna go here. I will say that um, if you wanna do the, you, you can't do this on a really hot day um, I find, especially in Australia, um, if I'm trying to do this and it's like 30 degrees plus, which is a good chunk of summer, um, it just, the, by the time you get the paint from the wet palette onto your model, it's, the brush has lost its tip. So I find, um, yeah, I don't have air conditioning at home or anything, so um, yeah, maybe maybe that'll help. But yeah, I, I just find that in if it's a scorching hot day, I don't even bother trying to do something that's this um, precise because it, it just doesn't work. So I'm just adding a little bit of black there. Um, it's in real life, it's more of a purple sort of appearance, but. Um, on uh, on the camera screen, it's um it sort of distorts the color a bit, but it's yeah it's sort of got more of a purple to it than a than a black. Um, yeah, so the next bit, this is really just the big reason why I'm oh sorry, um, the big reason why I'm doing this the dark bits first is because the interest from this picture. Uh, I find is the depth. It's the depth of you know this is the layer that's beneath this this other this layer is the top layer. This layer is the underneath layer, and it's that sense of depth that's re that really sells this. So if I know I like to know that something's going to work before I put you know this is realistically this is going to take about four or five hours. I imagine this um the the freehand the skull side and this um, face side. So I, I want to know that the thing's going to work. I don't want to get to the end and go, you know what, I've got to go right back in because I don't like that there's no depth. So I'm going to make sure that the one of the I've identified that that's my one of my criteria for success, and that's what I'm going to do first, so that I know yes, this is going to work with the course that I'm taking is is correct. I'm going the right way. Now let's. You know, let's refine it. Let's make it work, make it look really neat and tidy. We can do that later. But at the start, what we want to do is we want to know that the basics are, are going to work. So I'm going to have that nice sense of depth of areas that are closer and areas that are further away. So we want to know that. And I'm just constantly referring again back to, I'm going to zoom out a bit. There we go. I'm constantly referring back to the uh, the source material there. So you can see where it goes into this, uh, the corner of the mouth, that's where the muscles are all gonna, or the, the parts of the muscle is all gonna sort of join up and it's gonna be darker because it's going into that sort of area where you smile. Um, yeah, if that makes sense. Uh, this is, Underneath this little bit that I'm doing now is underneath the th 
the ligament, I guess, the, the bit that makes you, that pulls your mouth into a smile. So that's what we'll call that bit there. It's a little bit of, little bit darker here because that's just a little bit, a little bit there. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. And where else are we getting darker? Underneath here would be darker, but it's, uh, I'm not gonna need to do that because it goes into the um, part of the armor. Um, a big thing uh, to mention as well is when you choose your freehand, think about where you, it's going to go. It needs to be roughly the same shape as wherever you're putting it, otherwise it's just gonna look pretty weird. Um, so if I was gonna go, if I put say something that's long and skinny here, yeah, it might be a really cool picture and you love that picture, um, but it uh, if it's the wrong shape, long and skinny, you can see long and skinny won't work here um, because it's the the surface is there's two surfaces obviously, but there's they're not long and skinny unless you're going to lay it that way. It's not going to fit, and if you lay it that way, it's going to look really weird when you're looking at the Titan from head on, um, which is where you're going to see this from. Um, yeah, so think about that. Also think about what you, what the image that you're actually putting on there. This is going on a, on a thing that's existing in, in a, in a setting. So in it's, I want it to look realistic. Um, I, for me, and for the, this, this Titan legend that I'm sort of trying to portray, I don't, I don't see that they would hire an artist to come and paint a scene of, you know, a, a Primarch slaying a dragon or something like that. Sure, that might be on some Titans, but it's not on it's not on this Titan. And honestly, I think it looks better when, um, you know, I see those amazing, you see those amazing artworks that people have put on Titans. You think, oh my God, that's incredible. But to me, it sort of looks like, well, it's not an insignia, it seems to look a, it looks a little bit to me like it's it's more about using the titan as a canvas and not treating treating the titan or the tank or the shoulder pad or whatever it is as an actual thing that exists in a in a setting it's treating it as a, as a canvas and there's nothing wrong with that it's amazing there's some incredible stuff out there that that does that but for me i'm going for that realism so i need to think is this something that a Titan crew could paint on, theoretically could paint on themselves? Um, and yeah, that's that's sort of where I, so that's where I start with it. That's where I start with choosing the freehand. So let's put that away. Bit of the pink uh, horror. Gonna need to chuck a bit of water with that guy. It's, yeah, it's quite thick. Uh, a bit of, get a bit of the old pinks in there. So we're going to, need to go with some of the higher areas, uh, which will be this part of the eyelid. Again, these colours don't necessarily work together at the moment. That's where all your blending and your more traditional sort of, um, you know, artistic stuff will come in. So I'm just doing, this is the high bit. This is, again, this is still really a sketch at the moment. It's not anything more than that. Um, and this is, this paint is so thin. You can see how much of the, 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 the difference in color between the stripe and you know the, the dark stripe and the white it's that's because this paint is so thin um yeah all right so you probably don't need to just listen to me waffling on now i'm going to um cut the video here and we'll come back when we're at probably at a, a little bit more progressed right bye Right on. So I've had a look at my um, my Titan from last year, 
and I know where the next stage is color-wise. I'm just continuing to very gradually build up the opacity of these uh, this pink um, to to hide that um, that stripe that's underneath. So what you could do if you um, if you think ahead, you can always um, maybe use a stencil to block out before you put because I put the white down first. Um, what could have been a better idea is to put down in like a stencil in the shape of these this freehand so that it remained white under there. It was all one color. Uh, but look, I did the other one like this. It'll be fine. So I'm going to add some, this is um, Screamer Pink mixed with a bit of, uh, sorry, um, what do you call it? Pink Horror mixed with a bit of Screaming Skull. Pardon me. Uh, and I'm just going to use that to, again, block in the next important part. So after having a look at my um, Titan from last year, I know the colors that I used there. I'm quite happy with those. Um, I wanna do better than that. I wanna do every, you know, if I'm doing a freehand, I want the freehand that I do this year to be better than the freehands I did last year. Um, so I'm gonna try and put a bit more um, uh, some finer lines in, some better blends, yeah, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, it all just takes time. Yeah, so... Um, I forgot what I was going to say. So I'm just gradually adding blocks of colour in. Uh, and again, super thin. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you get to a point where, I mean, I really don't want to repaint this. Um, if I have to, I will. You know, don't rule anything out, but I prefer not to have to. I didn't have to do it last year. Um, well, I did because I got some, uh, but that wasn't because of the freehand, that was because of the um, resin, the, my primer hadn't bonded to the resin properly, so I had to repaint a big section of it, which was a real pain in the ass. Um, but, you live and you learn, hey? I'm not gonna have that problem, we haven't had that problem again um, with this model, because I, uh, yeah, I let, it, I let it sit for a few days before I even did anything to it. Um, the the paint wise so between coats I've let the the Titan dry quite a lot um, just because I yeah it's such a big model and I don't want anything I don't want to have to be redoing huge chunks of it it's super annoying so oh that's what I was going to say before so that the reason that freehand is tricky is because all those techniques that are probably more advanced, like wet blending and, um, and you know, color, like uh, color theory, it, freehanding takes all, it's, it's all of those things. It's all of those more tricky things that you don't naturally have straight away. Um, and it takes all of them and adds them onto the model and you have to do it pretty much towards the end so just before the weathering stage is when you need to be adding these things so you've already done quite a lot of work you may have already done some edge highlighting you've done some shading you've done some uh, you've done quite a bit of work already before you get here and now you're adding another layer of something that's incredibly um, tricky to, it's yeah I'm not going to say that this is an easy thing to do it's not an it's not an easy thing to do this is not a beginner's thing um, because it, it incorporates all of those tricky things like wet blending and knowing where light is coming from and, uh, yeah, color theory and add onto that that there's no guide work. This is a flat piece of plastic, whereas if you're, you're just starting out on miniatures, you're using the, the 3D um, surface to, to inform where your paint's supposed to go. Um, and you're flying without um, without any of that sort of um, navigation here. There's no real um, 
aside from the source material that you're using, which could be a drawing that you've done yourself or a painting that you've done yourself, you are just, you know, just using those techniques that you've learnt um, through either going to art school or watching people's um, tutorials or just sort of, you know, working it out yourself. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not easy. This is by no means easy. And it takes practice. It takes quite a lot of practice. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So, yeah, just um, thought for the day. So you see we're starting to get some decent colour in there. It's starting to look more like an anatomical drawing. We're probably at about half an hour's work now. Um, I imagine there's probably another hour and a half to go on just on this side. Um, and obviously that doesn't take into account the planning and the printing of it and the, you know, making sure that I'm happy with where it's positioned and any of that. Which, yeah, there's probably another few hours there, but you can do that, you know, you do that on the bus, you can do that on the toilet, you can do that, um, you know, throughout the day. So I'm just, this is a super thin, but because of the nature of what I'm doing, adding these lines in um, is really helping me. So just doing it like this as a series of lines um, is really uh, what, what I need to convey what I'm um, trying, to, trying to portray. So we need a little bit more white. So we're not white, but screaming, screaming skull. I'm going to put a bit of that here. Can you see that all right? Yeah. So I'm just wet blending. Holding it nice and steady. Um, yeah. Definitely something I couldn't convey with a series of pictures, I don't think. Um, yeah. I really, I really, really, really enjoy doing this. Um, it's quite nice. It can be... If, if you get it wrong and you, you, you're not sure, if you ever get to a point where you go, oh think I'm going the wrong way, stop, put the brush down, stop and think about it. Uh, think about your next moves because you do have to keep this, and I say it again and again and again, I'm sorry, but you do have to keep this paint thin. So before you just instinctively grab another colour or start, you know, start on another area, stop and Take a couple of photos of it and start thinking about it. And the photos will actually help you. So I, I will take photos of this all the way along. Um, yeah, because it's it's super handy to have a different, you know, a, a different, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like another set of eyes, really. I'm really liking this Artis Opus brush too. This is um this is really nice for freehand this brush. Um yeah, I think I said before I I it wasn't blowing me away painting um models with it, but it's um to do this, it it's really come into its own here. I'm able to get really nice line work here oh I think it's nice I'm not sure there's people out there going looking at this going god what's this idiot doing I'm trying to teach people how to paint this shit but you know it's always someone who's better at something out there than you I'm happy with what I'm making um, and at the end of the day that's all you can do just compare what you're doing to what you did before don't worry about what um, 
you know, the Golden Demon winners are up to. Unless you are a Golden Demon winner, in which case you're sure as shit not watching this video. If you are one of the 12 people that is still listening to what I'm saying, then, um, yeah. Thanks. Right up. I going to say before, so that the reason that freehand is tricky is because all those techniques that are probably more advanced, like wet blending and, um, and you know, color, like uh, color theory, freehanding takes all, it's, it's all of those things. It's all of those more tricky things that you don't naturally have straight away. Um, and it takes all of them and adds them onto the model and you have to do it pretty much towards the end. So just before the weathering stage is when you need to be adding these things. So you've already done quite a lot of work. You may have already done some edge highlighting. You've done some shading. You've done some, uh, you've done quite a bit of work already before you get here. And now you're adding another layer of something that's incredibly um, tricky to, it's, yeah, I'm not going to say that this is an easy thing to do. It's not an, it's not an easy thing to do. This is not a beginner's thing. Um, because it, it incorporates all of those tricky things like wet blending and knowing where light is coming from and, uh, yeah, color theory and add onto that, that there's no guide work. This is a flat place, piece of plastic. Whereas if you're, you're just starting out on miniatures, you're using the, the 3D, um, surface to, to inform where your paint's supposed to go, um, and you're flying without um, without any of that sort of um, navigation here. There's no real, um, aside from the source material that you're using, which could be a drawing that you've done yourself or a painting that you've done yourself, you are just, you know, just using those techniques that you've learnt um, through either going to art school or watching people's um, tutorials or just sort of, you know, working it out yourself. Um, yeah, it, it, it's not easy. This is by no means easy. And it takes practice. It takes quite a lot of practice. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So, yeah, just um, a thought for the day. So you see we're starting to get some decent colour in there. It's starting to look more like an anatomical drawing where it, uh, probably at about half an hour's work now. Um, I imagine there's probably another hour and a half to go on just on this side. Um, and obviously that doesn't take into account the planning and the printing of it and the, you know, making sure that I'm happy with where it's positioned and any of that, which yeah, there's probably another few hours there, but you can do that, you know, you do that on the bus, you can do that on the toilet, you can do that, um, you know, throughout the day. So I'm just, this is a super thin, but because of the nature of what I'm doing, adding these lines in um, is really helping me. So just doing it like this as a series of lines um, is really uh, what what I need to convey what I'm um, trying to trying to portray. So we need a little bit more white. So well, not white, but screaming screaming skull. I'm going to put a bit of that here. You see that all right? Yeah. So I'm just wet blending. Holding it nice and steady. Um, yeah. Definitely something I couldn't convey with a series of pictures, I don't think. Um, I really, I really, really, really enjoy doing this. Um, it's quite nice. It can be, if, if you get it wrong, 
and you, you, you're not sure, if you ever get to a point where you go, oh, I think I'm going the wrong way, stop. Put the brush down. Stop and think about it. Uh, think about your next moves because you do have to keep this, and I say it again and again and again, I'm sorry, but you do have to keep this paint thin. So before you just instinctively grab another colour or start, you know, start on another area, stop and take a couple of photos of it and start thinking about it. And the photos will actually help you. So I, I will take photos of this all the way along. Um, yeah, because it's it's super handy to have a different, you know, a, a different, uh, I don't know what you call it. It's like another set of eyes, really. I'm really liking this Artis Opus brush, too. This is um this is really nice for freehand this brush. Um yeah, I think I said before I, I it wasn't blowing me away painting um models with it, but it's um to do this, it it's really come into its own here. I'm able to get really nice line work here. Oh I think it's nice. I made sure there's people out there going looking at this going god what's this idiot doing I'm trying to teach people how to paint this shit but you know it's always someone who's better at something out there than you i'm happy with what i'm making um and at the end of the day that's all you can do just compare what you're doing to what you did before don't worry about what um you know the golden demon winners are up to Unless you are a Golden Demon winner, in which case you're sure as shit not watching this video. If you are one of the 12 people that is still listening to what I'm saying, then, um, yeah. Thanks. Right up.